It's great to see you. Uh, so my opening joke just kind of got ruined, so that's a great start. Uh, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because i got to practice for first service. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, or those of you who you think you know me, my official, legal, full name is Pastor JC's husband. So it's, it's really long on the driver's license. It looks weird, and people look at me weird, but it's all right. Uh, no, I'm Corey. Uh, been married to JC for over nine years now. Um, very excited. We met in college. You'll hear more about that later. So as I was preparing for today's sermon, uh, I started to think back on my time growing up uh, in my home church and my journey as I went to college to study to be a pastor. And something I always remembered was we used to sit in the front row as a youth group. Uh, We'd have the whole teens there for first service and then we'd break for second. And I remember you would see the pastor and he'd walk up and he'd only have his Bible. He'd walk up and he'd set it down and you'd be like, ooh, bold move, no notes. I like this. (laughs) This guy knows what's going on. He's got it all up here. This is going to be good. And then he starts, he opens it and he starts preaching. And you're like, this is good. This guy's good. He knows his stuff. This is, this is sweet. And then you start to look. You go, he's, he's got paper clips in his Bible. Oh, I got gotcha. you. That's where the verses are. Yeah, this guy, he thinks. He's a thinker, that one. And then a little later in the service, you're like, he's turning the pages awfully quick. And he's not reading a Bible verse. What's... And you're like, oh. There's the notes. He's clever. <laughs> and you look around, and you're like, yeah, no, no, no one else knows this. Like, you're the only one that's sitting there, and you can see it. And every now and then, you'll catch a glimpse of the printed-off sheet inside as he flips the pages, and you're trying to signal him, like, people can see it. Don't, don't show them. They can see what you're doing. Well, I'm happy to say there's no notes in my Bible. So I'm going to get the notes on my iPad going. <laughs> so growing up, uh, my pastor, he was, he was a tower of a man. Um, somebody who, he should have probably been a professional basketball player. Some of you may know him. We actually have a photo of him from back when I knew him. So that's uh, Pastor Mike O'Neill. And you might notice the little guy in front of him. And that's Ryan O'Neill. And I knew the Ryan and that family when they were that little, when they came to my church. And he, uh, Pastor Mike, was one that he always seemed to give you confidence. You always listened. He was a pastor that you loved and really enjoyed being with. And so... Just wanted to share that moment and that uh, Ryan, knowing him as a little guy, trying to chase him around. And then, uh, weird how things work out. I actually went to NNU, studied uh, in Christian ministries with a minor in youth, and Ryan was actually in my class. (laughs) So, it's weird how things turn. But we'll we'll talk more about that. Today, I hope um, to give you guys a little glimpse into who I am. I haven't really got to come up and speak to you guys, although Mike tried several times. Um, I did get to talk to our men at Men's Retreat a little bit, and they got a little bit of my story. But I want to share with all of you kind of my journey. And you noticed on the first slide we had that the the church board kind of came up with this idea of where we're at right now. And it's trusting God on the pathway forward. And so that's where we're going to live. And I'm going to give you some stories in my life where this happened. Transitions happen, whether we like it or not. Transitions are there. But before we begin, I'm sure you guys can tell, I'm a mover and a shaker when I preach. So, Doug, stand by. Be right back. I need boundaries. Can you go to like the wide angle camera? And then let's see if I can. 
Okay, how far can I go? Can I go here? Right there. All right. This side? To the screen, probably, huh? Yeah, like right here? Okay, good. All right, so these are my boundaries. Try not to piss off Doug too much. Because I do like to move. So who am I? Other than Pastor JC's husband. I currently serve as a police officer here in town. But long before that, I was a teen growing up in Mountain Home, Idaho. It's a small town. Uh, and I was an Air Force brat. My dad served in the Air Force for over 26 years. And we ended up there. And that's where I went to high school and graduated from. And that's where I met probably one of the biggest, most important people in my life, and that was my youth pastor, Chris Wright. Chris, Chris Ryder. I got a lot of Chris's in my life. And there, I really started to feel a call. He used to say one thing in youth group. No matter the journey he had, because he wasn't your traditional pastor, but no matter the journey, if he could touch one teen's life, everything leading up to that moment was worth it. And I like to think that was me. So, I wanted to do that. I felt like God was calling me to do that. So I started looking into ministry. And like a true 17 and 18 year old, I thought I had everything planned out. Things changed. My mind changed, right? And I wasn't quite sure. Then I was going to go into the military for a little bit. Then I was like, well, I should probably go to college. So I gra graduated from high school, and I went and tried to study at Boise State University. That lasted all of like two weeks. So I uh, ended up getting out of Boise State or simply not going. So that's a lot of Fs on my record now. Uh, and I joined the Army. And I left. So, did the army. We'll talk some more about that. And then that call never went away. It's always there. And no matter how weird or crazy or hectic or crappy my life got, I was always steered back to the church. So, it's time to get out of the army. What next? I'm going to go to school. Because they're going to pay for, well... I went to NNU, so they paid for my lunches, but uh, they, they were going to pay for my college, so I thought it, it was a good idea. So God is always at work. I was in Iraq for the second time, and I was able to get all my financing accepted into college and my residence scheduled for my freshman year while I was in country, before I even got back. Now, if you remember, I didn't drop Boise State. I just stopped going. So those transcripts, and then you like to look at them. So <laughs> I still got accepted. I was on academic probation for a while, but I got accepted. So that was a journey. And then I met JC, and we'll talk some about that. <laughs> this is the quick version. But there was a change between my junior and senior year in college, and that's when I started looking at becoming a police officer. And there's several reasons for that, but I'll bore you with those details. But anyway, it worked out. I started looking into it. We graduated. We moved out here, and uh, we moved out in June, and by that October, I had a job offer. So things have worked out, and I've been working there ever since. But I do like to come and talk to you guys and do that sort of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so several months ago, I was asked if I would preach today. It started out as JC coming to me and goes, hey, Mike wants to know if you want to co-preach with JC. I was like, sure, I can do that. Then it turned into, well, you're going to preach because <laughs> she's going to preach another Sunday. And then it turned into, oh, you get to preach the first Sunday Mike's not here. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> so we're going to go through several different parts today, as I, I like to label them. First one's going to be God has already gone before us. And we're going to look at Deuteronomy 31.8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsaken you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Now, Deuteronomy represents uh, Moses' last sermon to the people of Israel before his death. And in this chapter specifically, 31, Moses is talking to the people of Israel. And he's stepping down and bringing in Joshua. Because Moses knows, and he was told by God, that he will not be crossing the Jordan River. He's an old guy. He talks about it in the verse. But we see in chapter 31, Moses' emphasis is that God has gone there before. They're not going alone into this new territory. He has already been there. He will pave the way for his people. Much like this transition period, God's already been here. He's moved ahead of us. So we don't have to be that scared. He's there. He's got this locked down. He knows what's coming. And we, as a people, just have to trust in God and move forward. And we, collectively, big, big C church, as a people, we have always had this idea that God moves ahead of us. That he's at work in our lives even if we don't know it. This is, and that idea is one of the core ideas for the Nazarene church of provenient grace. Where God is already at work. He's been there. He's doing something. He's moving. What a fitting song today. I didn't even know that. That was great. But it speaks to, he's working. Even if I don't see him, even if I might not feel him, God is already there. He's already been doing something, whether I know it or not. I can recall several times in my life where once you look back, you go, holy buckets. Yeah, that wasn't me. How... How did he know? It's crazy how he works. And we talked a little bit about it with the O'Neills. One way or another, I've, I've been intertwined in their lives randomly, right? With Ryan and Mike. So, let's go back to the army. So, I leave home. I join the army. Of course, you do the basic training in your, you know, specialty schools, which happen to be in Georgia, which is fine, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> and then they flew me far, far away from home. And I was stationed in what some people might say is a horrible place a place no one ever wants to visit, let alone live there. And I had the misfortune of being stationed in Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's on an island, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> it is an island, sorry. Uh, and it's got a culture of its own. And here I was, a guy from a small town in Idaho. Now on my own, having to make my own decisions, dealing with my own finances, and living, I actually looked it up. Oh no, where's it at? 2,845 miles away from home. 
It wasn't easy. Now, once I first got there, I was immediately deployed to Iraq because my unit was already there. And so that would start my first tour of duty. And then I came back, and I was back for exactly one year to the day before I deployed the second time. But during that year period is when I really started to struggle. I didn't have my family, I didn't have my church family, and so I started to look for a church. And I tried to remember how exactly this came about, but I ended up finding this church plant. A little small church where you set up every day in a school, and then you tore it down every day. So I started going there. Little did I know, God already had a plan for me. So the pastor and his wife, and we have a photo of them for you today. This is RJ and Casey. RJ and his parents went to the church, the Nazarene church in Mountain Home. I know his parents very well, and I know him very well. He graduated before me. He's, uh, I know it's hard to tell in the photo, but he's older than I am. (laughs) Um, But he used to, uh, he went to NNU, and he would bring some of his guys down, and they did a skateboarding ministry. So they would have to drive, I think it was 40 miles or something like that, and they would come once a week, and they built ramps and rails, and they would just skate with us high school kids. And then they would take us to some skate parks in Boise, And that was their ministry, and that's where I really got to know RJ. And then now, in Hawaii, I'm attending his church. He would prove to be a very, very major mentor and friend in my life, and a hard part of my life. And that, God is at work long before us. Long before I even knew it, he's putting things in motion. Now for the second part, I want to talk about God is with us. He's here right now, with us and among us. And so we're going to look at Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Now this is another passage of God's reassurance to the people of Israel. A people that are in exile. And these are God's people. And we see even God's name, Emmanuel, God with us. It's throughout Scripture. We are not alone. We never have been. Whether we see it or not, He is at work. And He is with us. There are times where we may feel alone. Outside the comforts of our home or of our normal but we're not. God is always with us. Through Scripture, we are reminded that He is there. We see it throughout the stories. Now, I know it's, it is easier said than to feel sometimes, right? There are those times, those moments where we can feel helpless, alone, and scared. But then there's those moments where we're reminded. It could be a song on the radio. It could be a story from a friend. It could be a phone call, a card, or just a post in this day and age of social media. 
where God kind of flicks us awake to let us know that we are not alone, that he is there. So after leaving the army, I was going to go to college. Now talk about feeling alone in the midst of a crowd. I was going into a whole new world. It's a world I felt like I could belong in, but it was new to me. Now, we, we kind of talked about it. I kind of attended college beforehand, if that's what you want to call it. But I didn't really experience it. And this was going to be different. I can tell you that there is a difference between Boise State and NNU. But I wanted to fully throw myself into this journey. So I'm going to set the stage a little bit for you of how I felt going into this. Now, when we think of college, right, we've got 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, just graduated high school, going to change the world. And for the most part, they know their world, right? It's not a knock on them. It's, that's how we do. We grow up, and this is a succession of that. And it's not everybody, right? There are those... Um, anomalies in there, but when I went, I would often define myself as this when I met people. I'm 24, I'm a tra transfer freshman, <laughs> student who's got multiple combat tours, stepping into the world of 18-year-olds fresh out of high school. I felt alone. Our lives were just different. Our experiences were different. And I was nervous on how to relate. But in this new land, I knew God was with me. I had to trust him, and I had to keep moving forward. Because I knew God had a plan. That he had already been here and gone ahead. And my time at NNU was amazing, life-changing, and I wouldn't change a moment for anything. Oh, yeah, and I met JC there. <laughs> I think we have a photo of that. No, yeah. Happy Halloween. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So NNU was good. God was good. And he was there, making sure JC was there, waiting. And I'm very thankful for that. Now, God was at work through my military, the transition to NNU, and my life after. God has always been there. And I've just had to trust and look forward. Now, there's times I didn't want to, and there's probably times I didn't. But then we're reminded by the small things. And then we keep moving forward. So that brings us to the third part. And apparently I'm talking way longer than I thought I would. So <laughs> we're going to go through this. God is greater. And we're going to look at James 1, verse 2 through 4. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider this nothing but joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. This book is a letter from James. In this letter, he's addressing an audience, and he states in the beginning of this book to the 12 tribes, and James is referencing the scattered people of Israel, God's people. As many of you know, we will face trials in our life. We have faced trials in our lives. And you notice James uses whenever, not if ever, whenever. 
They're coming. They've come. Some will face trials greater than I can even imagine, and I will face trials that I thought I could never overcome. But it always seems, when I look back, that I see God's hand in certain moments. Big or small, we're not alone. We do not walk alone. God has gone before us, and he is with us. Today marks the beginning of a new time for this church. And it's okay for us to feel sad, frustrated, angry, maybe confused. A pastor is not just somebody that we see once a week. They take on a role, or many roles, I should say, a friend, a mentor, a counselor, a mediator, a bad comedian. Well, that's just Mike, but (laughs) an organizer, our cheerleader, and a shepherd. That is why we put so much work into finding them. Us as a church and us as a church with the big C. As a church, we invest in our leaders because they are so much to us. And it's okay to grieve, but we cannot live there. We have to put our trust in God and continue on the pathway forward. Because God's already gone there. Because God is with us. And God is greater. So as we close, I'm going to leave you with this benediction and then we're going to share in the tradition of the Lord's Prayer at the end. Peace be to the whole community and love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with all of who have an underlining love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand and join me as we recite the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, And I hope you have a great day.